Greetings, good morning everyone and welcome to this auspicious occasion streaming live from ICJ Kenya House. My name is Silas Kamanza and I'm joined by my co-moderator Mukami Wangai and the chairman of ICJ Kenya, Mr. Kelvin Mogeni. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today as we celebrate uh, the 10 years to this constitution. Um, we'll be, we will be uh, together with, uh, we'll be joined together with uh, eminent jurists from across the region uh, in this uh, event. Uh, ambitious in every sense, Kenyans saw the constitution as a basis uh, for the transformation of their, uh, of the economic and uh, politics of, of the politics and the law of this country. Indeed, the Katiba sought to uh, sort of transform the lives of Kenyans in every, every single sense. Uh, now to mark this occasion, ICJ Kenya and Strathmore Law School organized uh, a series of uh, uh, webinars dubbed the Katiba at 10 webinar series, where we discuss different, different chapters of the constitution, uh, including devolution, uh, equality, and, 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 and finances. Now, uh, with a view to, uh, of course, assessing the view, uh, the extent of the implementation uh, of the constitution in the country 10 years down the line. And today's is a culmination of, uh, of these discussions. Allow me to uh, welcome Mr. Kelvin Mogeni to give us his opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Sailors. Uh, uh, my Lord, retired Chief Justice, uh, Dr. Willy Butunga, our chief guest, Professor Isa Shivji, who is joining us from Dar es Salaam. Distinguished jurists, participants, colleagues, ICJ members, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council of ICJ, I want to thank you all for joining us today as we mark 10 years since the promotion of the Constitution of Kenya. Over the last six weeks, ICJ Kenya and Strasbourg Law School have partners to host a series of weekly webinars dubbed the Katiba 10 series. The discussions and webinars were aimed at uh, debunking various constitutional themes and keenly evaluating the implementation of these provisions of the constitution. It is those series of deliberations that have culminated in today's auspicious event, where together with our partners and the collaborating institutions join the rest of Kenya in celebrating the 10th anniversary of the, our constitution. This constitution was intended to transform society, provide parameters for the promotion and protection of human rights of every citizen by the state and promotion, promote cohesion and social justice through equitable representation of all genders and people of Kenya. The constitution of Kenya 2010 was a product of a protracted process that culminated in a referendum. It was intended to correct historical injustice, address abuse of power, economic and political, political marginalization and other social ills which have characterized Kenya's political regimes since independence. The clamor for our new constitutional dispensation was inspired by the need to create a bedrock upon which Kenya could transform from repression, despotism, and citizen subjugation to a future of renewed ethical values, respect for human rights, citizen emancipation, revitalized and accountable institutions. While there has been a steady but incremental movement towards the relation of some of the constitutional imperatives, there is still great need for and reflection considered of the gains made to date. Despite the existence of a progressive and robust chapter on the Bill of Rights and the values binding on all persons to uphold the constitution, numerous vices such as violation of human rights, poverty, social, social and economic injustice like corruption still persist and have become endemic. These vices are mostly experienced by the marginalized and indigent persons in our society. Those living in formal settlements are relentlessly condemned to police brutality and poor socioeconomic conditions. Our youths are routinely subjected to extrajudicial killings uh, in these settlements. Evictions have been carried out at night to the detriment of vulnerable women, persons with disability, elderly persons, and children. This is despite the existence of court orders barring such evictions, including this as in this at present times of the COVID pandemic. Government officials have continued to act with impunity. Whenever patriots seek and obtain orders from the judicial system, these officials ignore the court orders with the carte blanche mentality. Such actions further undermine the rights of access to justice and the principle of separation of powers, which allows for checks and balances. While great strides have been made 
in addressing the gender, gender equality on issues such as property ownership and rights in marriage, the realization of two, just, two, two, two thirds gender rule in elective and appointed positions remains elusive. Devolution has failed to deliver on the promise of inclusion, socioeconomic development, equitable distribution resources, and improved service delivery. County governments are still riddled with corruption, nepotism, tribalism, inefficiency, misplaced priorities, greed, selfishness, lack of accountability for public funds, and total disregard for the rule of law as the centers refuse to allow proper devolution to take root. Transformative constitutional constitution should, not, should, should always be the underlying theory that embodies Kenya's constitution. It is the spirit that must capture the aspirations of the people of Kenya. It, its long-term goal is to rebuild our political, social, and economic frameworks, institutions, and re-engineer the direction taken by the state. The realization of the transformed spirit of the constitution requires more commitment and respect by all persons, especially state officers, public officers, public entities, and obligates the holders of such officers to uphold values and the spirit of the constitution at all times as set out in Article 10 of the constitution. Kenyans desire a country where resources are equitably distributed, institutions function independently, and decisions are made based on the fairness, equality, opportunity for all, and above all, where all are held to account for their actions. As we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Constitution of Kenya, I urge all of us to reflect on these gains and the challenges as they pertain presently. I urge each of us to take an active role in our diverse sphere of influence to monitor and ensure the implementation of the Constitution continues. Let us stay committed and relentless to defend the letter and spirit of our Constitution by embracing and participating the values that shape our constitutional common agenda. In the words of Nelson Mandela, and I quote, you have a limited time to stay on earth. You must try and use that period for the purpose of transforming your country into what you decide to be. I thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman, for those uh, wonderful, wonderful remarks. I uh, would hand over this program to my co-moderator, Ms. Mukami Wangai. Thanks a lot, uh, Silas. Uh, thank you to ICJ and uh, Mr. Mugeni for uh, those great uh, opening remarks. Welcome again to everyone who's joining us. Uh, thank you for uh, being part of our celebration of uh, 10 years of the Constitution of, uh, of Kenya. Uh, today, we uh, at Strathmore Law School have partnered uh, with uh, like-minded organizations as Silas mentioned, we've been running a series with uh, ICJ Kenya, uh, particularly for today. Uh, we have also partnered with uh, Katiba Institute, uh, the Kenya Human Rights Commission, uh, Inuka Kenya, and Kabarak uh, Law School in order to celebrate uh, our achievements of the last 10 years and also to look to the next uh, 10 years. As we heard from uh, Mr. Mogeni, uh, the work is not done. And uh, as citizens of uh, Kenya, each and every one of us uh, plays a part. So we will have uh, two parts to our program. We'll begin with a, a keynote uh, speech uh, right after uh, remarks by our uh, partner organizations. Uh, we'll have some reactions to that keynote. Uh, and then in the second part of the uh, program, uh, we will be launching uh, a publication uh, by uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Willy Mutunga, former uh, Chief Justice of uh, Kenya, and um, really will be uh, tracing the transformative agenda, particularly the role of the civil society. So please join us uh, by tweeting uh, and retweeting by the hashtags uh, Katiba at 10, uh, Tekeleza Katiba, and at ICJ Kenya and Strathmore Law. So I will now invite uh, three of our partner organizations uh, to give a brief uh, welcoming remarks uh, and uh, a very big welcome to Mr. George Kegoro, uh, the Executive Director of Kenya Human Rights Commission. Um. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure for us as the Kenya Human Rights Commission to be in partnership with ICJ Kenya 
uh, uh, on this occasion, which is the 10th anniversary of the new constitution, when the story of the constitution making process in this country is written, uh, both the partnership uh, of ICJ Kenya, uh, the Law Society of Kenya, and the Kenya Human Rights Commission will find at least a page in that history. In uh, 1995, those three organizations came together. Uh, Kenya Human Rights Commission was still in its cradle, um, showing a big ambition than it was. It had any right to uh, to show. Uh, coming together with the more established ICJ Kenya and the Law Society of Kenya in a partnership that gave rise to the Kenya to Itakaya movement. Dr. Willie Mutunga, who is on this call, was a key player in uh, bringing that about because he was then chairing the Law Society of Kenya and was the was uh, sort of the the engineer and the architect of uh, that extremely effective arrangement. The Kenya to Takaya movement was to be the birthplace for uh, the motion that eventually got the country into organizing a constitutional reform process. What was important uh, with Kenya to Takaya is because is that it managed to shift the debate forward because at that time the debate that uh, was in the country um, was whether or not the country needed a constitutional reform process and this debate had not moved forward. By drafting the first model constitution, which was the major product of that collaboration and also drafting uh, a, a booklet, the Kenya Twitakayo, which was translated into several uh, languages, it managed to move the step forward by the, giving the country a, a, a way of imagining as to what a new constitution could look like by giving the country an, an, an example of a new constitution and an example of a vision of a new country and a new constitution, it managed to move the step, uh, the, the debate forward. And henceforth, the debate became uh, more changed from whether or not the country needs constitutional reform and, in, and, and, and soon became what method of constitutional reform, what process should be adopted in, uh, in, in giving the country a new constitution. And that is the new stage and the new phase into which a lot of the current actors uh, in the constitutional reform debate have, um, uh, have, um, have, have, have joined uh, the, 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 the history at. So I'm, I'm, extremely, I'm extremely grateful. And on the occasion of the 10th anniversary, I would like to recall that partnership. I would like to give um, um, to give my, my warmest regards to the leadership that brought that about. This then moved as forward to the stage um, in the 90s when, um, um, uh, and of course we now, we now know IPPG, which IP, IPPG then became one of the ways of trying to uh, both balance between the, the rejection of a constitutional reform uh, as an idea and control it, and IPPG then qu quickly gave rise to um, a new process in, uh, from 1998 onwards that then uh, Professor Yash guy uh, completely and correctly uh, regarded as the, as the father of the country's new constitution was very, very instrumental in uh, giving rise to. So on the occasion of uh, the 10th anniversary, I would also like to really, really pay my warmest uh, um, uh, 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 regards and, um, and, and, uh, to, and, and compliments to Professor Guy for what he has done for this country and for what he remains to uh, and represents in the country. It was a very, very difficult time when President Moy unilaterally after 1998 established a state-led constitutional reform process and gave the task of leading that to Professor Guy. He could have said no at the beginning and if he had, uh, the history of this country would have been markedly different. We don't know in which way the history of this country would have moved forward. But he said yes and it looked to us like, like it was a mistake for him to accept uh, such a discredited offer from such a discredited political leadership. The only th reason why anybody became interested in what a uh, professor Gale could ever possibly do is because he had huge, huge amount of personal credibility himself. So we gave him the benefit of doubt because we said, 
this thing is um, is uh, is doomed from the beginning. Uh, but because you are you, Professor Yashke, let us see what you can do with it. Almost nobody else could have navigated the contours of the divisions that existed in Kenyan society at that time, because then there was a Fangamano process that uh, that that arose from uh, from the reaction to Moi and started an, uh, on a life of its own. And there's what the Kanu started uh, under Moi, and that was uh, that a life of its own. Professor Gay was almost only the only almost the only person who could have navigated uh, the suspicion and the brinkmanship that was evident as then became necessary uh, to bring the two uh, processes together into what ended up being the, the CKRC and leading it under extremely challenging circumstances, uh, being undermined constantly internally from uh, by the commissioners, being undermined externally by the political actors that, that did not want the process to go forward, being undermined by the media that was either misinformed or had been set up to undermine the process, being undermined by the, the, the problems, the, tra the, the, the more traditional problems that we have in the, as a country uh, in terms of the levels of ignorance and so on and so forth. And withstanding all those challenges and giving us, uh, g leading the country eventually to the moment in 2010 when we had a new constitution. So I would like on the occasion of the 10 years to pay very, very great tribute to Professor y Yashke who is on this call. I would also like to pay tribute to the people who since the promulgation of the new constitution have done their shift in giving effect to the vision that is in that constitution. It's not been easy and we all thought that once we got a new constitution, the hard work would end and life would be easy for all of us after that. But after 10 years, we all realized that getting a new constitution was necessary but it was not the end. It was actually the beginning of a struggle for us to live the, uh, the vision that the constitution uh, 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 documented and that we gave ourselves through a documented uh, outcome called a new constitution. We've had, we enter constitutional order on the backdrop, you will all remember, of the post-election violence that then uh, went a long way in coloring the the, the, the experiences that we, um, we've we had and the ICC cases and so on and so forth. And everything that we've had, the, the huge amounts of political undermining of the new constitution has been colored by the fact that we we get, we got ourselves a new constitution, do, uh, uh, which was partly a ceasefire, but, which, uh, but that ceasefire itself needed mechanisms in addition to the constitution to address and we are told as as from last night that we need to change the constitution again because of the fact that it was the ceasefire document and now we need a new constitution because when we don't have we don't have when when the ceasefire has ended i would like to say in response to that that we have actually never had an end to the problems that came in 2007 to the extent that we've pushed pushed put pushed them aside and not wanted to talk about them and we can't uh, we can't go into changing the constitution uh, and, and changing the constitution to whichever text. The constitution is just text. Whichever text we have, it will never solve our problems unless we come together to talk about those problems and find ways in which the new constitution can help us in moving them forward. So to salute uh, um, ICJ Kenya again, to salute uh, the partners that uh, you, you have assembled into today's extremely auspicious occasion and to salute everybody that has been vigilant in giving effect to the, the new constitution, including my board member, Davinda Lamba, whom I see here and who has done so much himself and everybody else that is on this call, Strathmore University. Thank you very much for being part of the occasion and for making us a partner in that occasion. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kegoro. Uh, thank you to you for agreeing to be part of today. Uh, thank you for uh, how you've served uh, the country and the constitution also as uh, KHRC. Um, and thank you for saluting everyone who has been part of uh, that process. Uh, so our next uh, speaker who will make uh, brief uh, remarks uh, is Ms. Christine Nkonge. She is the executive uh, director of uh, Katiba Institute. Uh, so welcome, uh, Christine. Thank you so much, Mukami. And uh, uh, good morning to everyone who's joining us on this webinar this morning. 
and I will join John, I mean, George, uh, sorry, I'll join George and uh, to say, to salute uh, everyone that has been involved in working towards realizing the dream and promise that we had, uh, we gave to ourself, uh, ourselves on 37th of August, 2010. So of course, this is a critical taking stock moment. Uh, of course, we should monitor every, every year the compliance uh, and implementation of the constitution, but now 10 years later, sufficient time has passed for us to get ho a holistic view of all the sectors of our governance are working and to realize now where are we? Uh, are we well on our way uh, to getting a just and democratic society or are we actually going back and regressing to situations that we thought we had escaped? So uh, as Katiba Institute and based on uh, the work we've done the last nine years since Katiba Institute was established and following a study we did last year uh, on auditing the constitution, a more academic uh, exercise, uh, we also can now very uh, equivocally say that, um, you know, unequivocally say that, of course, we have an impartial implementation of the constitution. At best, uh, it is it is uh, partial. So now it means that we still have a lot of work to do ahead of us to ensure full implementation of the constitution. Uh, of course, we introduced a new form of governance that was to cure, as George said, the historical problems that we've had that led to a complete breakdown of faith by citizens um, in the system of governance that we had that it resulted into internal strife in 2007 and 2008. So now that we gave ourselves a new constitution that was supposed to first and foremost protect the dignity of Kenyans to ensure that we have freedom from violence from private and public sources, to, to use access to information to allow for open and transparent governance, to having a free press, to lifting up of the quality of traditionally marginalized and minority groups, addressing historical land injustices, uh, you know, making economic, social, and cultural rights as important as civil and political rights, and curbing, of course, our endemic problem with corruption. So dealing with government was supposed to be made easier through public participation, through devolved and decentralized governance units. We, as a people, uh, increased our oversight institutions from only having um, parliament to having independent commissions and independent offices. The Attorney General was required to have the public interest in mind uh, whenever giving uh, advice to the executive or the national government. We were to have an independent office of the director of public prosecutions. We had security agencies like the police and the NIS to be oversighted by a civilian body. And we had the National Police Service Commission to come in and set standards of work, discipline, and job advancements to cure the many problems we had with the police. We had required an independent judiciary controlling its own funds, uh, taking the primacy in appointment of judicial officers. But now we are here, where are we? Of course, there was a framework. A framework has been set up. Offices have been opened and personnel has been placed in those offices. And some laws, and uh, actually uh, a number of laws have been passed and policies implemented to ensure this framework works. But now what we've been seeing in the recent past is a regression of, of, of those positive moves. We are in a situation whereby Counties and national assemblies are having problems on sharing of revenue. We still have endemic corruption. Police brutality is rife, especially in informal settlements. No clear implementation of ECOSOC rights. As has been noted, evictions to pave way for mega projects are undergoing, are ongoing. We have challenges in implementation of uh, environmental protection where development is prioritized over environmental conservation, the weakening of powers of oversight institutions and funding. So we still have a lot of way to go to ensure smooth transition from one political regime to another as we saw in the 2017 general elections. So whereas yes, we have made good progress, there's still a lot that needs to be done. And this book that is being launched today by Dr. Willy Mutunga is, reminds us of the struggles of our past 
and uh, what we had to go through to get here. And so the fact that at that time in the 90s, we needed a broad-based coalition of students, academia, the media, civil society, religious institutions to cause this constitution to be born. The same way now, we must reactivate that broad coalition to ensure that we have full implementation of the 2010 constitution and to safeguard the gains that we have made under that constitution. Uh, thank you, Mokami. Uh, Christine, uh, and thank you very much to uh, Katiba Institute. Uh, I'll now uh, give the floor to uh, our last uh, speaker on behalf of partner organizations, uh, Mr. John Gidongo. He is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Inuka Trust. We look forward to uh, hearing from you in just a few uh, minutes uh, what your uh, take is. Welcome to Mr. Gidongo. Thank you very much, and um, um, uh, it's, it's it's a pleasure and an honor to be to be part of this uh, commemoration of uh, ten years of, uh, of of our new Katiba. Um, much of what I would have wanted to say has already been said. Uh, and to, to, to to salute uh, individuals like Professor Yashpal Gai, who has uh, who has sh who shepherded this this process. Uh, of, of constitution, constitution making uh, in Kenya through the promulgation in, in 2010. Uh, Willie Mutunga uh, for being steadfast for, for decades uh, around, around this uh, agenda. And so it, it's fitting that uh, we gather today to also uh, honor, honor those who have been uh, leaders in, the, in this struggle to bring this constitution about. And uh, also, perhaps to to we are, we are, we are at a point where our, our our political class is very interested in the constitution as uh, we head into you know transitional elections. Uh, so it's an, an important moment for the for the constitution where the, the, the discussion of of changing it has happened. Um, and when I reflect, I'll, I'll just make two two comments of of what has worked. Yes, um, uh, we have. Uh, Corruption in 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 the in the devolved units in the counties, um, but it's it's clear that that one element uh, from the polls and, in, and from talking to Wanaichi, uh, devolution has had a transformative transformative effect on the lives of people across Kenya, despite its many its many problems. I think Kenyans are quite pragmatic about that. The, 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 the Supreme Court is another institution that has came into being as a result of this constitution and um, has. Uh, work to bring some sanity to the way we conduct elections, which are our primary instrument of accountability vis-a-vis uh, -vis our, uh, um, our public officials. Um, unfortunately, the, the chapter six of the constitution on ethics and integrity was watered down. And I think Kenya is paying the price now uh, for this. And it would be interesting for us to have that conversation. Um, we, we, what was anticipated uh, for that chapter of the constitution was not what was eventually passed by members of parliament. And as a result, over the last um, seven years, we have had the most corrupt administration um, in Kenya's history, which is ironic, just when we've passed a new constitution that we find ourselves in this situation. In fact, uh, from where I sit, uh, studying illicit behavior and corruption, um, the the organization of illicit activity in Kenya has become more organized. Uh, it is far more formalized. Uh, and uh, even when resources are being extracted from the budget, um, it is, they're now di extracted directly from the budget. They put into, to, to, into budget lines. Um, and the budgeting of, uh, of corruption um, almost transcends the constitution in that many of the institutions, the, the oversight institutions that were created by the constitution um, to check this kind of behavior uh, uh, are, are overtaken by these uh, um, kind of machinations. So uh, I'm looking forward to, date, to today's conversation. I think Kenya has, has, has a great constitution. Uh, I often say, um, it is it's the Kenyan constitution has not failed Kenyans. Uh, it is it is our it is Kenyans, especially our leaders, who have failed uh, a great constitution. And uh, Santeni Sana to all our partners and everyone who participating in this commemoration. Thanks. 
Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Gidongo. I like that you uh, say that it's a, a conversation. Uh, so we are here really to, um, to listen uh, and also to hopefully take some action uh, after today. So uh, thanks again to KHRC, Katiba Institute and Inuka Kenya. So I'll now hand over uh, back to Silas for the next part. Thank you. including Professor Yash Falgai, uh, Professor, the late Professor Okoto Ogendo, and Dr. William Mutunga, uh, Professor Emeritus, and uh, former Mwalimu uh, Julius Nyerere Chair in uh, Pan-African Studies at the University of Dar es Salaam. Basi ni ungeni kwa kumkaribisha Professor Isa Shivji. Uh, welcome, Professor. Santeni sana, na washukuru sana, kunyalika na kunipati nafasi hii kukutana na marafiki zangu wa miaka mingi pamoja na wengine ambao siaona siku nyingi uh, my keynote nanisikia you hear me yes we can hear you mwalimu thank you my a keynote address is titled Do Constitutions Matter? Question mark. The Dilemma of a Radical Lawyer. Maybe it's a dilemma, it's my dilemma. But by the end of my address, you will decide. Let me start, and I'll be reading my keynote address in the interest of time. Constitutions don't make revolutions. Revolutions make constitutions. No constitution envisages its own death. Because so that is what a revolution entails. But constitutions do matter. Some of the finest constitutions have been crafted on ugly socioeconomic formations, wrought with extreme inequalities and inequities. South Africa and Kenya are examples. But still constitutions do matter. Constitutions rarely herald fundamental transformations. They are the product of major transformations to consolidate the new status quo. Yet constitutions do matter. So then the question is, why do constitutions matter? Why do we need constitutions? Why every revolution and major change in modern societies birth new constitutions? This is the question I want to reflect on. Why do constitutions matter? Let me start off by stating the obvious. A constitution is as much a political as a legal document. It is a kind of power map. Deeper structures of a constitution reveal, albeit partially, the constitution of the state, the constitution of the state, the primary repository of political power. The constitution defines the citizen and expresses the authority of the state over him or her. It defines and demarcates the rights of the citizen and limits his or her freedom. In turn, the state demands unquestionable loyalty to itself. 
state authority and citizens' loyalty is sanctioned by criminal law, which stands for the use of force. Citizens' rights and freedoms are sanctioned by civil law, which censures individuals and organs, never the state. Citizens' loyalty to the state is taught in our schools as civics. State's authority over the citizen is political, not civic. And politics, as you know, are embargoed from schools. In the mystified language of politics, the absolute loyalty to the state is called patriotism. It is in the name of patriotism that wars are fought and conflicts between and among ruling classes played out, all at the expense of the lives and freedoms of the people. I said constitution is a political document. Now I extend it. It is also an ideological document. It mystifies citizens' loyalty to the state as a civic duty, while it mesmerizes state authority over the citizen as necessary in the interest of society. Rights and freedoms are given by the grace of the state, the gratuitous. Restrictions and abbreviations of rights and freedoms are a necessity, which the otherwise benevolent state has to enforce in the interest of social stability, which really means state stability. All liberal and liberal left discourses, whatever the nuances, and however anti-establishment anti they may sound, ultimately reflect and reinforce the ideological apparatus of the state to justify, mystify, and mesmerize the state's monopoly of authority and violence to maintain the status quo. Why do then constitutions matter? Constitutions are a terrain of struggle. As progressive lawyers like some of you and me would say. It is a cliche, but a cliche with some truth and much mystification. Permit me briefly to deconstruct this cliche by asking the following rhetorical questions. Who fights that struggle? At what site? In whose interest? For what purpose? Under what perspective and set of values, which really is a euphemism for ideology. When you use the phrase set of values, you're actually talking about ideology. Lawyers fight their struggle in courts, through litigation, in the interest of their clients, with the purpose of winning driven or motivated by a set of liberal values, human rights, accountability, checks and balances, limitation of power, etc. 
values that are anchored in liberal democracy, which is the staple on which we have been trained and fed and brought up. What is there in it for lawyers? Fees in the pocket, status in society, reputation at the bar, appeasement of the conscious, and inflation of the ego. That's a bit harsh and cynical. For, for there are some who do pro bono work funded by liberal donor organizations, including such dubious funders as George Soros, Open Society. Some of you may know that Soros made his money through speculation on the financial markets, or what can better be described as casino capitalism. But to be fair, on the margins of such a coterie of elitist lawyers, there exist sincere, well-intentioned, and self-sacrificing lawyers who are motivated by the passion for social justice and fight for the rights, dignity, livelihoods of the working people. It is to this group of radical lawyers that I wish to address my following remarks. And some of those are present in this celebration, who have sacrificed their personal interests, have spent time in Moy's torture chambers to fight for the rights and freedoms and for justice. And I include myself in this group of radical lawyers. It is important for us, radical lawyers, to recognize the limits of bourgeois law and constitutions. First, law by its very nature individualizes collective demands and in, as individual grievances and disputes. It does fragment social struggles and undermines solidarity of the working people. Secondly, in a litigation, it is the lawyer who is the hero, while the people are victims or spectators. The hero fights while the spectators cheer. It deprives the people of the self-esteem and militancy. It subverts people's agency. And when I use the term people, I mean what you call one anchi, see one anchi. Thirdly, the struggle moves from the barricades to the barristers, thus robbing the people of the schools of struggle, which are streets, neighborhoods, and places of production. Fourthly, while victory goes to legitimize the status quo and the system, defeat results in despondency and hopelessness, and not infrequently surrender. Finally, the progressive lawyer is infected even more deeply by what some have been called the liberal virus. 
holding high the placard of change and reform, while simultaneously holding down the banner of fundamental transformation. So then the question for the radical lawyer is, why fight for rights and freedoms and constitutionalism? Why at all constitutions matter? I'm sure many radical lawyer has agonized over this, as I have over the years in my legal aid and trade union practice. Let me think aloud with you on how a radical lawyer may engage, may engage in the right struggle while keeping his or her passion for social justice and transformation alive and undented. <coughs> and I speak from my experience. I'm sure many of you had similar experiences. First, it seems to me a radical lawyer must disinfect, must disinfect herself or himself of the liberal virus. And the most effective vaccine is revolutionary theory and conscientious practice. You will notice that I'm using the vocabulary now we are used to because of the pandemic. Second, a radical lawyer must disabuse himself or her, herself of the notion that law is neutral and apolitical. It is not. If politics is the concentrated form of economics, as Lenin said, I add law is the concentrated form of politics. The question is, what kind of politics? Radical politics are not on offer and cannot be picked up from workshops and seminars. Rather, they should be learned from the masses for real politics are where the masses are. Third, a radical lawyer must humbly acknowledge that legal struggles are only one front of the social struggles of the working people. Therefore, it cannot be waged in isolation from other fronts of struggles. Fourth, a radical lawyer should not stop at chanting the constitution is a terrain of struggle. He or she must go beyond to identify sites of struggle. The sites of struggles which matter to the people are where they live. Urban neighborhoods, village communities, slums, etc. And where they get their livelihoods, land, factories, and so on. Fifth and finally, Radical lawyer must recognize that the sites of struggle are also sites of organizing working people. Unorganized masses are like steam that evaporates into air and disappears. But the same steam when captured in an engine pushes the piston and moves the engine. 
setting these guidelines in the abstract rightly sounds esoteric and perhaps unrealistic. It behoves on me, therefore, to concretize them. <clears throat> I'll do so by broadly painting one possible scenario. Excuse me. Let me use what they call triangulation. My three points will be right to life, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. Right to life can be further resolved into rights to live with dignity and right to decent livelihood. In short, right to be human as Upendra Bakshi would have it. It is around these rights that local struggles ought to be strategized and people mobilized and organized. It is around these rights and freedoms, the litigation strategies should be worked out. This way of highlighting and focusing on a selected number of strategic rights and freedoms allows one to move away from the plethora of fragmented rights discourse. This way of crystallizing the rights struggle on the ground and in real life situations of the masses of the people also gives radical activists a handle on the demands that could and should be made of the state at the national level. So we work from bottom upwards. And here I would like to draw in the concept of commons, both traditional commons like land, water, underground and overground natural resources, and what I call new commons, which I often call public goods. In this, I include education, health and sanitation, energy, communications and finance. Here, the strategic demand would be to decommodify and deprivatize the commons. In other words, for the working people to reclaim the commons and liberate them from the clutches of monopoly finance capital, which is invariably assisted <clears throat> by our compradorial states. This way of conceptualizing, operationalizing, and strategizing on different fronts the right struggle and the struggle for the commons would strike an immediate code in the consciousness of the masses. For it is a struggle for the distant livelihoods and for the human dignity. It is a struggle to facilitate their production where energy and finance are important factors. And it is a struggle for the education and health of their children. It also becomes a struggle to bring sectors, to bring strategic sectors of the economy 
in the public domain. It is thus a struggle against local compradorial classes and imperialist capital. Because many of these sectors that I mentioned, as we know, are dominated by imperialist capital. Friends and comrades, I have perhaps overstepped my boundaries and said more than what you bargained for. Let me end with two remarks. You are commemorating 10 years of your constitution and launching my friend Willy Mutunga's new edition of the book, Constitution Making from the Middle. No doubt, the new constitution, you have a fine product. It's a fine constitution with a fine legal craftsmanship. Many commentators have analyzed and will continue to comment on the product. My interest though, is not so much in the product, but the process which went into making the product, which is so well captured in Willie's book. I had the taste of that process when I was invited to address the National Convention Assembly, NCA. I think sometime in 2001, and I believe it was held at Ufangamano House. I was amazed at the composition of the delegates attending that convention. They're all elected at the grass at the grassroots level, mostly working people in the ragtag clothes and women by boy. And the state was not involved in that process at all. The deliberations, the deliberations were in Kiswahili. Really reminded me that at that meeting, I warned Walala Hoy, <coughs> that is working people, not to leave the process in the hands of Walala Hai, the petty bourgeoisie of the middle class, for they will be betrayed. Apparently, that is what Mutunga's book documents. for the process was driven by the middle class. But, and this is an important but, NCA mothered so many social justice centers which have continued the struggle for social justice in slums and communities. Their demands go beyond constitutional reforms to social reforms. That is the path, in my view, towards fundamental transformation of our social order. Really tells me that he's planning a sequel to his book which will capture this process in what he wants to call constitution unmaking from the bottom. Un is my addition, not his. I said this and make it clear so the blame is laid at the heart, 
at the right quarters. It would be blasphemous to accuse unmaking of the constitution to former chief justice. With these many words, I thank you for inviting me from across the border to join in this commemoration. I always marvel at the Kenyans, the, the, the capacity of Kenyan Congress to organize and never to let any occasion to go by without using it as a peg for advanced study bed. When I was a student in the University of East Africa and then a young lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam, we used to have a joke making rounds of the left that in East Africa we had a neat division of labor. While the Tanzanian left was very good at articulating theory and ideology. They were poor at organizing. The, Kenya, the Kenyan Congress may not have been that articulate in theory ideology, but extremely well, extremely good organizers. The Ugandans, even before grasping the theory, ideology, or organization, simply took to the bush. I do not want to go it again, but I think it says a lot of the capacity of our Kenyan comrades from which we can all learn to, 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 to organize. So once again, thank you for inviting me from across the border to join you in this commemoration. Truly, you are breaking new ground to ground a new African intellectual community. Shall I call that community a community of intellectuals without borders? Asante Nisana Nakila Lahari. Number C. Number C. Mniunge kwa kumshkuru Professor Isa Shivji kwa maneno tamu na mazito katika akili zetu. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, for those um, uh, very insightful words. I felt very moved. You have given us, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is in your heart. Uh, you have demystified the constitution. You have uh, painted the picture of what we have right now, the challenges. Uh, you've told us who should be engaged in the fight in the next decade, uh, what people to be involved. Uh, what perspective to take and uh, going even further to tell us how to do it. Thank you so much, Professor, for this, for, for those, those uh, inciting words. Uh, I'll give over to uh, my co-moderator, uh, Mukami, to take us in the next session. Over to you, Mukami. Uh, thanks again, Professor Shivji, and for the reminder also that uh, we are comrades in this together. We uh, have uh, very brief reactions. Each uh, speaker will take uh, only two minutes uh, to tell us uh, two things. Okay, so uh, for the three uh, reactants, uh, tell us first uh, what struck you uh, from uh, Professor Shivji's uh, uh, speech, uh, his keynote address. And secondly, what do you think um, Kenyans should, should take from this? You know, I know we could all uh, if we did our research, write a, a thesis about what we could uh, take home. Um, but just in two minutes, uh, what struck you and what to take home. Uh, so first off, we have Melissa Mungai, who is a graduate uh, assistant at Strathmore Law School. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Mukami. Thank you, Silas. Good morning, everyone who's watching. Um, of course, the first thing that's come to mind is I know nothing. So it's a true mark of every Mwalimu, every remarkable Mwalimu that we meet who have forged on in our societies. Um, what stood out for me, and I'm going to answer this um, I'm going to personalize this, let me say that, um, as a young lawyer, as a young female lawyer in this in, in Nairobi, Aban, Aban County. Um, so 
Mwalimu started with a question, um, do constitutions matter? And then uh, the subtitle of a radical lawyer. So I was asking myself, when do we begin to become radical lawyers? When does that process start? And when he was talking about how the state mesmerizes us in the constitution um, by making civic duties appear as necessary, I actually started to think about maybe those were the small inclinations I had in my own life to become a lawyer today, singing the national anthem, reciting the loyalty pledge, um, you know, remembering all those uh, uh, freedom fighters who paved the way for our country today and indeed inspired the constitution that we are celebrating today. So it's ingrained in the mind, uh, you get to law school and it's the same idea again, um, the civic duty is again being put out as necessary. And do we really uh, just get mesmerized about them and want to fight for them or do we actually internalize them? And so that was the first thing. When does this radicalness begin? Radicalness being understood as, is it something violent? Is it you know pushing on the streets? Or is it, as Malimu rightfully said, being a conscientious uh, person uh, fighting for justice. And uh, what I think we should take home um, from, from this as all of us, again, as young lawyers, because I'm speaking on your behalf on this platform, is to highlight that part Mwalimu talked about, Monanchi versus Mwanyanchi. Where do you think power begins? I always think it begins with the people, it's people power. Um, even when we think of our devolved governance and we're trying to be lied to that uh, it's, you know, devolution is bringing power closer to the people. I argue is that people are reclaiming the power so that it's hard at the center. And um, the various spaces that we should utilize as young lawyers, so it's not only in the courtrooms, it's in the classrooms for those who choose to teach like myself. It's where we are, I mean, our lands, our livelihoods, our neighborhoods. Um, Michelle Mugo, as I, I'll finish this, used to call these places liberated zones. So let's keep liberating these zones, twisting and bending them the way we know how to. Thank you, Mukami, for the opportunity. Thanks a lot, uh, Melissa. Uh, so next up, we have uh, Elisha Ongoya, who is a advocate and senior lecturer at Kabarak Law School. Uh, so uh, he will follow uh, and immediately after uh, Mr. Ongoya, uh, Ms. Uh, Masi uh, Deche, please uh, go ahead and, and make your, uh, your uh, comments uh, without um, me breaking you. All right, so we have Mr. Ongoya first. And then immediately after, uh, Ms. Teche, uh, welcome for your two minutes, Mr. Ongoya. Thank you so much. You so much. Uh, when it all started with the intituling of the presentation, Do Constitutions Matter? The Dilemma of a Radical Lawyer, I expected a very skeptical presentation. But uh, what has impressed me is that I picked a very optimistic tone and optimistic content of this presentation. As a matter of fact, uh, this drew my mind back to the famous article by the late Professor Hastings of Kotogendo, Constitutions Without Constitutionalism, Reflections on an African Political Paradox. And what struck me again is that that article was published in a book edited by Isa Shivji, the presenter with us here today. So I find that quite, quite uh, exciting. The lessons I picked from uh, these were the following. One, that this struggle, as we call it, needs the correct ideological anchorage. That in the absence of an ideological anchorage for this struggle, we may wander all over the place without direction. There's an express acknowledgement that indeed constitutions matter, but there's a rider that constitutions are also political documents. And we need to know how to fashion this struggle within the political context. Uh, Professor Issa Shiji took me back to those days of Vangamano where I would occasionally sojourn as a young university student. At the end of it all, something that I'm reminded all the time is that our constitution constantly talks about social justice. If you look at the preamble to our constitution, it recognizes the aspirations of all Kenyans for a government based on the essential values of social justice. If you look at Article 10 of the Constitution, 
it recognizes social justice as one of the values of the constitution. If you look at Article 19 of the Constitution, it identifies the reason for protecting fundamental rights and freedoms to, among other things, promotion of social justice. Isa Shivji has reminded us that we need to ask ourselves, what is our role in this struggle for social justice? I've carried home the term, the radical lawyer, the sincere, self-sacrificing lawyer motivated by social justice. Over to Dr. Masi Mwaradeche, my good friend. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mali Mwongoya, and uh, thanks, uh, everyone. Uh, just to go straight to my two minutes, I want to say just like um, when I saw uh, Professor Issa was uh, going to speak to, to us, I remember that uh, he has his own discomfort with the neoliberalism. And uh, then when I saw the topic for the day, do constitutions matter, I, I was just like uh, Ongoy, I was there, you go. He's going to tell us they do not matter, let's uh, go for revolution. But uh, I was uh, pleasantly uh, surprised. Uh, what I what struck me is um, the mundane, something I would call mundane that I always participated in when I was in school, uh, reciting the loyalty pledge to the president and the Republic of Kenya and all that. I did not know that I was being pushed to my civic duty. Whereas on the other hand, there is the issue of, uh, of the, the, what the state or the political class owes me, it was put in the side of uh, politics that was totally removed from school. So that was uh, really striking. But uh, when, Professor, you talked about uh, the masses, uh, I appreciate first and foremost the fact that you, when you are talking about the radical lawyer, first and foremost, you kept saying he or she. Uh, I don't hear that often, and thank you very much for making me find my place in that radical lawyer. Most of the times we use the generic uh, he, but uh, I thank you for that. However, when you are talking about the masses, I was wondering whether a woman really fits in that, uh, in the masses, knowing that uh, patriarchy and paternalism uh, rolls down all the way to, to where the masses are found. But maybe that's a discussion you and I uh, can have uh, much uh, later on. But uh, what I would take home is the fact uh, that you stated that there are limitations to the bourgeois law. And the constitution is one of such uh, laws, although it's the supreme law, it has limitations. And that is why as Kenyans, then we need to ask ourselves whether all this prop the solution to all the problems we are having in this country uh, should be solved through constitutional amendments. Whether it's the problem we have been told about a shared prosperity, about inclusivity, or even corruption. Because as you have said, there are many fronts, there are many battle fronts, not all the battle fronts are, are legal. And then lastly then, what should we be looking forward to in the next uh, decade? I think uh, to use very pedestrian language, we need to stay woke from what you have told us, Professor, we need to stay awake and alert. Yesterday, when the president was speaking, I had words, one of them, uh, George Kigoro mentioned one of them about the constitution being um, a, a ceasefire document. There was another description of the constitution uh, being a document that needs to be changed so that it doesn't freeze in paralysis. So when we hear that, we need to stay woke, not just now, but in the next 10, 20 years to come, so that whatever changes, and we are staying woke so that we can manage the constitutional process and any attempts at amending uh, the constitution so that whatever amendments that may come should start from the bottom up, as you have said, and not from up where two people shake hands and thereafter, we are going to change the constitution. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Um, um, Commissioner Deche, for those uh, very insightful uh, views. Thank you so much, uh, Alicia, and thank you so much, Melissa, for those very inciting uh, words and remarks that you have given us today. 
uh, today uh, in the spirit of this celebration. I'm joined by amazing, amazing young uh, gentlemen in this country who have uh, uh, who are committed to uh, speak the word and tr speak truth to power. I uh, introduce uh, Javan the poet. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Javan the Poet. With me is Yani and uh, Baraka the Saxophonist. We are going to do three pieces. The first one is uh, Journey to the Promised Land. The second one is uh, uh, We Are Still Struggling and Ototoetu. Thank you. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Can you hold on? Keep on. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Journey to the promised land, but only long. Can you hold on? Keep on. Can you hold on? Keep on. Cause your gun could blow holes, kwa heads, na chest. Siku protect ni contest ya nani anangusha wengi nani anajaza meli nani atashinda hesi the system is a mess halisema shoot to kill but it's all over for screen kama mbaya mbaya ndio town boss tunamaliza generation ama pair lawyer uniform pair judge uniform kwa wote kwa street to shiko investigate alafu kill familia za victims ilipie bullets mpate pay rise ama pathology wa governor mocha wapate clients to journey to the promised land but in long Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Can you hold on? Keep on. Can you hold on? Keep on. Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Journey to the promised land, but don't long. Can you hold on? Keep on. Can you hold on? Keep on. Land cruisers in the Geukahas. Very body bags, forest drones in major body parts. See what you, the animals, co killers, co poo poo, shoot, knock to a bullet, co throat. I love comedia when I co applaud. I couldn't light when you turn any co closed. I couldn't justice for years, I can't see co post. Not with guns, but with our voices to touch a lady of mind, Jew. Journey to the promised land, but don't be long. Journey to the promised land, but don't be long. Journey to the promised land, but don't be long. Journey to the promised land, but don't be long. Can you hold? Hold on, keep on, can you hold on? Keep on, can you hold on? Keep on. Thank you. That is the first piece. I'm gonna give you the second piece. Let's try. Sana, nasio za kulevya, dawa dawa, so many fallen soldiers, juu ya life ya utegi, pinta tunangoja, because we want so many changes, here and in the crime everywhere, eh, eh, Hey, let's show some here to our siblings out here yeah. and learn to live together to the song and be le 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 Easy to mountains, he may come home. That price is a song. A tuna kura zilek nazo tuna uza. Who's matter now? Nikiwada, wanakula kwao. Life's good for them, wanatumia watskama. Wow. 
Toxic flow na maji badala ya hewa Nikish kwa nyumba after election badala ya hema Tajua kuna change Juu sijui difference ya tao na so kwa duka kuna change Pepa baga zina wait Mata nyumbani ya tunakazi ya plenu Taona kesho, I guess Hatuta songa mbelele, lele, lele Kibonga mo, nila action zote nike Lele, lele, lele Hatuta songa mbelele Lele 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 Abulens imekuwa too fast kutupeleka kwa Grim Reaper Jukumente life, health services Too expensive, death is cheaper Kishiba excess, turukana means nishida Kids dying daily, nisipa Biashara ni asara na uzasari ya nyumbani mia Ya magendo na pungu za kandasi ili mia Pungua macho wone, who's to blame? Ai, nige kwa mrasta, nige sema Ai, and ai, gapia puwa na richi na waide Nitabidi maskini wache wakoke ndo one good life in heaven no, not joke. It's never too late. Get your vote. Be wise. 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 Be Na tuta saunga mbelele, lele, lele, lele Bila action zote nike, lele, lele, lele Na tuta saunga mbelele, lele, lele, lele Bila action zote nike, lele, 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 lele Thank you. Tuna kiki the third and last piece. Na hii naituwa wa Kenya ama watoto wa Kenya because we believe we are the sons and the daughters of this nation and we must make change, be part of change. Watoto wangu we, we, mimi baba ye, we, sinikona nguvu, we, na hiko kwa katiba, na walinda kila siku, hai watoto mungu, na walinda kila siku. Ayu watulu wangu, bila msilie, bie, nimesikia shida zenyu, ila msilie, bie, katiba iko hapa katilie, zilindwe, haki zetu wote zilindwe, zilindwe, haki zetu sote zilindwe, zilindwe, haki zetu sote zilindwe, Watoto wangu we, we, mimi baba yenyu, we, siniko na nguvu, we, na hiko kwa katiba, na walinda kila siku, hai wadhulumu, na walinda kila siku, hai wadhulumu, kila msinie, nie, nimesikia shida zenyu, kila msinie, nie, Katiba iko hapa kwa jili enyu Zilindwe, haki zetu sote zilindwe Zitunzwe, haki zetu sote zitunzwe Zilindwe, haki zetu sote zitunzwe Na zitunzwe, haki zetu sote zitunzwe Thank you, Yani. Thank you, Barak. My name is Javan the Poet. Let's make change. Let's be part of change. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, so uh, much Javan, you. Ian, and uh, Baraka for that wonderful performance. Uh, thank, thank you, you uh, everyone. Uh, we uh, will be now showing you um, a short video um, hearing from uh, some of our students at Strathmore Law School about the constitution and, and what they think. Uh, and then we'll join you uh, for the launch of uh, Dr. Mutunga's book.
Hello everyone, my name is Tasneem Perbai and I am a third year student in Strathmore Law School. So today I would like to celebrate the 10th year anniversary of our 2010 constitution. And to celebrate this, I would like to talk about some of the features, the positive features of our 2010 constitution, as well as methods of enabling this constitution to do even better. Now, the first feature of our current constitution, our 2010 constitution, is the exhaustive Bill of Rights, which also covers a discrimination clause. This is a very good Bill of Rights as compared to the previous Bill of Rights, which had a lot of drawback clauses and which was not nearly as exhaustive. This has helped protect several Kenyan citizens from injustice and has helped prevent the abuse of power. Additionally, this current constitution um, enforces the separation of powers. Now, the separation of powers is more emphasized in this constitution through the independence of the judiciary, the independence of the executive, and the independence of the legislature as well. This is fantastic because it helps prevent other prior historical injustices that had occurred in the previous constitution and within Kenya's legal system prior. Finally, I would like to finish these positive features by talking about how this current 2010 constitution addresses the history of Kenya in an even better manner. This is because it considers past injustices and works to rectify these. And this is also done through the promotion of alternative dispute resolution mechanism through Article 159 2C of the 2010 Constitution, which helps promote justice through other means other than the formal litigation system, which also helps recognize customary law as a method of promotion, which is also being done through the AJS policy that is also being launched today. I would now like to finish off by talking about the aspects of this 2010 constitution that could be made better. So I think that as a document, this 2010 constitution is fantastic. It has done a wonderful job in its articles and in the writing, and it is very transformative in what it has done. However, I think that while our document in paper is fantastic, our practical application of it is not. Thus, going forward, I would like to advocate for a more practical use of this constitution through the better use of institutions and through better education and mechanisms to ensure that the constitution, the transformation of the constitution is enabled and achieved. Thank you very much. I hope you all enjoy this conference and I hope we all enjoy celebrating 10 years of our wonderful 2010 constitution. Welcome back and uh, we are into part two of uh, our event today, the book launch uh, for constitution making from uh, the middle uh, by Dr. Willy Mutunga. Uh, we are running a little bit uh, behind on time, but uh, I'm sure we shall uh, make that up uh, over the next uh, segment uh, before uh, we move uh, to the final part. Uh, so it's uh, a great pleasure of mine uh, to now uh, ask uh, Dr. Mutunga uh, to give us an introduction uh, to, to the book. Uh, and uh, after he, he speaks, uh, we will have uh, brief uh, reactions. Um, but it's very great to have you, Dr. Mutunga. I know that you joined us early on and, and have been uh, following uh, quietly. Um, and now uh, we look forward uh, to hearing from you. Karibu. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I thank Strathmore, uh, ICJ, uh, Inuka Kenya, Kabarak, Kenya Human Rights Commission, Katiba Institute, and the, the panelists. I'm also very delighted that two of my great teachers, Mwalimus, 
uh, uh, part of this uh, discussion. And I thank Professor Isa Shilji for the keynote uh, speech. Now, and you know, finish the story itself. Um, and the story is interesting. You know, you, it tells you the various positions taken by the youth, uh, grassroots organizations, uh, NGOs, and here we're talking about uh, secular and religious uh, uh, sectors of civil society, uh, public intellectuals, uh, and uh, political parties, and also the so-called international community, which is a euphemism for foreign economic and political interests. So, you know, the story gives you a glimpse of the various interests and uh, classes, uh, you know, uh, involved. I initially wanted to update the book, but I realized that that wasn't a good strategy because uh, Immediately after that book, Macau wrote his book, uh, Kenya's Quest for Democracy. And uh, a lot of writing has, you know, uh, gone on, uh, has been done. And so I, I thought the best thing was to, to write a, a, a new preface, uh, which uh, kind of updates my, you know, my thinking, my critique. Of, 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 the, of the book. And so once you are finished with the story, please go to the, the first preface and the second one, and also the, the first forward by Ash Guy, and you know, the forward to the second, uh, uh, you know, the second, this second edition, and you will find uh, the uh, my my views uh, about you know constitution making, my own reflections uh, when I served, you know in the uh, you know judiciary. I talk a, a bit about the the theory of interpreting the the constitution, my dissent and my concurring. That's really uh, yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? Dr. Mutunga, apologies yeah. for the interruption. Okay, okay, you can hear me now? Yes, yes, yes clearly. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was just saying the, uh, the current preface to the second edition uh, uh, also updates, you know, my thinking and my own reflections uh, uh, serving as a chief justice and sitting in the Supreme Court because there was a bit of that uh, continuity. Um, and uh, I guess that's all. That's all I need to, you know, to say. Uh, you just, you know, read the book, enjoy it. I wait for ruthless criticism and, and the reviews. And thank you very much, Mukami. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Uh, Mutunga. Uh, I have spied uh, one copy uh, with us here in, in studio today. I'm tempted to uh, take it home with me, but I have not been granted permission. Uh, so uh, I will wait for that later. Um, for now, uh, we'll hear uh, reactions uh and i'll hand over to silas to take us through thank you mukami um give me, give me one second just one second all right Some, something i forgot uh i i wanted to thank javan the poet you know the uh and his two colleagues uh because a lot of us now realize that the artist movement is a new frontier for uh you know social justice Mm -hmm. And I just want to ask you that, you know, going forward, uh, that kind of uh, uh, 
but in the program, we shouldn't call it entertainment because what those guys did wasn't entertainment. I think they, they were, it was uh, uh, great messaging on constitutions and what uh, is going on here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Mutunga, for, for your very kind remarks. And um, uh, we've noted that, uh, your, 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 your advice. Um, allow me to usher in into the next session where we would hear reactions from uh, uh, three, uh, three personalities, Dr. Osogwambani, who is uh, the senior lecturer at uh, Strathmore Law School and editor-in-chief uh, at the Strath Strathmore University uh, Law Press, I mean Press. And then uh, speaking of young people, uh, today we have Lizzie Kibira, who is a student at Strathmore Law School, and then later uh, Professor Yash Palgai, Professor Emeritus and former Chair Constitutional Constitution of Commission Review Commission, uh, Constitution of Kenya Review Commission. Over to you, Professor. I mean, Dr. Osogwambani. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Um, I'm very excited because this is those days that our, our product is being harvested. Uh, Mukami here is um, an editor with me at the Strathmore University Press. And it's quite exciting to be here today. Um, just to mention three things. One. Um, to say what struck me with this publication, um, sitting from where I sit as an editor, for example, um, the preface. Um, this is one of those books you want to publish the preface separately, then ask for the people to read the book also. I didn't know what to do about it. The preface is serious in the sense that um, it asks or it directs us to have new paradigms, to think, think out of the box. It challenges what we know. And building on the triple heritage, uh, our CJ, uh, try to ask us not just to look at the West, there's other directions we could look to for knowledge and wisdom. I think that is a powerful a preface. The first one and the second one as well. I think you must start there. He says you end there, but I think you start there. That's a book on its own. Um, then secondly, I think there are several things we could take away as Kenyans, but because we have no time, I'll just pick two. One is from William Mutunga's book, I can see why we are stuck in constitutional implementation. Um, it's clear in this book that the constitution was written from the middle, but the middle that was unique because it had grassroots support or connections, uh, or at least it mobilized the grassroots. The constitution was never an idea of the political class. Um, and so expecting the political class to implement it is actually being naive. I think that's what I take home. So what Kenyans must do is to realize that the constitution has never been for the politicians. It is ours and we must occupy our space. The second lesson, and, and I, I regret that I read this book after leaving civil society. Um, it's a must read for every member of the civil society because the second lesson is for them. Um, the civil society in this book uh, feel betrayed and cheated by the politicians and used and dumped all the time. Uh, but the book appears to challenge me that civil society must do things differently. Um, they must put, put on the complete armor of politics if they want to engage. Um, politicians are politicians, dress like them, fight like them, wear all the armor and fight with, for your interests. And your interests being principle and values, fight for those values. Engage when you can, also dump them when you can, but stick with the principle. I think that's what I get from the book. It's a must read for every member of the civil society. Am, am, I, am I okay? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And congratulations, Willie, for that brilliant uh, contribution to knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tari, for those... Uh very inciting uh, uh, you know words and uh, you know speaking to uh, Dr. Willy Mutunga's introduction to the book uh, let's has, let, let's have uh, Lizzie Kibira for uh, her remarks. Uh, good afternoon uh, yeah. everyone. Afternoon. I would like uh, I would like to begin by extending my deepest gratitude to all my elders and I dare say on behalf of my generation it is because of your work that we are able to be here and talk like this and you offer a starting point for all our work. Thank you deeply. Now, on to what I found rather striking about the book. I think the first thing that struck me when I read the manuscript was the, was the language. It was just so inviting. The book flowed in a way that literally anybody could read it. Being used to a long academic text, this was just refreshing. And it's not just the language of the book itself, it's also of the movement. It's not just for a select few elite people. Even the use of 
Swahili uh, almost extensively throughout the movement itself, even talking about Kenya Twitter Kyle, that indigenizes things in a way that I found very refreshing. And speaking of indigeneity, I think that when I read this text, I'd already done my constitutional law and not encountered it during, during that course. And I was struck, the first thing I thought was, here is a constitutional text that is just Kenyan. It covers the history of it. And it tells me, here is where you start thinking from. And as a student of law and one who has had to go through the, the whole jurisprudence mantra of every white man in, in Europe and America, that was extremely refreshing. And I think that's one of, the, one of the things that I really loved about the book. It placed me in context. It made my life feel relevant. And one of the other things that struck me was just how long, complex, and protracted the fight for, for the Constitution was. In my memory as a 23-year-old, I can only think of more must go than banana versus orange and then the 2010 constitution. But those things just did not have a context in my mind. And reading this book, it made everything so much clearer and in the best of language. And that leads me to why I think it's extremely relevant even now. Somebody has to write that history. It would be difficult for me if I wanted to write that history now to know where to begin from. But Mutunga, Dr. William Mutunga, offers us the starting point, and that is very important for me. And then the second thing would be patience, passion, and persistence. I think when you're young, you want to move everything, to blow everything up and radical overhaul all of a sudden. But this book shows you that it's a long process. You have to stick with it. You have to persist. And that was extremely useful to, uh, to uh, you know, the passion of youth, as I would call it. And um, Again, I will insist on the shoulders that we stand on. It offers us a starting point. And as a young scholar, I am extremely grateful for this book. I think those would be my remarks for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie, for, for, for that, uh, for your views. Uh, even, however, how different we are from the, you know, as youths, uh, what I'm hearing from you is that we are ready and committed to fight this fight. This time we will fit the round peg in this square hole, even uh, however the politicians see us. Um, next, uh, please, uh, please allow me to welcome uh, a great friend to our keynote speaker today and a great friend to the author of the book uh, we are launching today. Uh, allow me to uh, invite over Professor Yash Palgai. Thanks. Um, I am a great fan of uh, his books. Uh, I was uh, very impressed uh, as I was planning to come or thinking whether I should come back from exile and uh, uh, help in making a, a new constitution. And I came across a book of his, which uh, this is, I think, the second edition, and uh, which provides a very good uh, uh, analysis of uh, the situation that it, at that time. This was a time when we had terrible regimes, but there was some pressure for uh, a reformed constitution. And his book uh, helped me a lot to decide whether it was worth my while or not to, uh, to become involved in process of making a constitution here. It gave me a very good idea of what had gone wrong, uh, what kind of improvements or what kind of starting all again uh, should be, what, are the, what will be the obstacles, and more over and above all, how to make the country uh, a place of justice, uh, equity, a uh, number of terms like this were used. And uh, I got a very good understanding uh, as I read the book about the, the situation at the moment, as well as uh, possible uh, changes. And uh, I had then uh, uh, big advantage when I started my work. Uh, his book was not merely scholarly, but spoke 
No, you don't like to, that expression. Uh, but he spoke to ordinary Kenyans, providing, as I understand, an understanding of uh, the objectives of a constitution and the propriety of having a new constitution. Uh, when I was asked um, uh, by uh, Moy to come and, and uh, help in making a constitution, I talked to a number of my friends uh, who were in, in, in Kenya then, I was in Hong Kong, and most of them said, no, 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 don't come, it's, it's a waste of time. But Willie uh, said to me, come, come, and I think you may make a change. And one of the first, you know, his book was a very important factor in my deciding I must go. Uh, the situation in the country, which he depicts very clearly, uh, is deplorable. And uh, if I can be of any help, uh, uh, I, I should go back. Uh, and uh, I also learned from that book uh, the whole framework within which I would have to operate. Uh, and uh, it, it prepared me for a situation I would see, but also how I perhaps could uh, deal with it. Now, apart, of course, from his uh, great book, which I'm so glad is now in this new edition, uh, that I, it was a fantastic book. And it also showed to me the, um, the hierarchies, the, the, uh, the social structure and the political structure of the country at that time. I had been on exile for many, many years uh, and had lost contact uh, with what's been going on. And uh, from that book, I learned quite a lot as to the approach I should take, as to the uh, uh, expectations uh, uh, which point had been made earlier, I think, uh, expectations that uh, people have would like to rather than expectation, but hoping that. It's a very good analysis of uh, the inequities, uh, the uh, difficulties for ordinary people. And uh, I think in the discussion we had today, this has been coming out, that uh, we don't look at constitution making from the perspectives of these uh, tribal leaders who are there to exploit the people, but it comes from, from behind. Uh, and that uh, uh, people are fed up, uh, but they feel helpless. And that again encouraged me to see if, well, if I can help, I would. Uh, but throughout the whole process, he was always available to help me. <laughs> Uh, without his uh, insights into what's going on, I wouldn't have made uh, uh, much progress with the constitution making uh, thing. But it also gave me a very good idea what people wanted. Uh, because you don't get that. Uh, one, if you're abroad, then you're dealing with these uh, crooks. So, but to, that book gave me a very good insight into what's been going on what people's expectations were, and to some idea of how we could do it. The first edition has a very interesting uh, chapter, which looks at how the people who were writing a book or you know, fighting for uh, freedom, justice, uh, equality, uh, had already sketched out the framework for the constitution. Uh, I learned a lot just from reading their draft. Uh, and I tried when I was working always to make sure the expectations they had, or the, or not expectations they had, but the uh, changes they wanted in, in the system were laid out very clearly. And uh, that enabled, enabled me to they ease my work a lot. I could have the framework, I could have the issues, I could have the parties involved in this whole process. And, um, and of course, during the process itself, as I have mentioned, 
his help was very useful. So I'm glad in a way that he, unlike most of my friends back home here, discouraged me from coming. They said, you are stupid to come. You know what these people are and politicians are here, etc." But I just felt that, that it was my country, whether more knowledge this or not, uh, but that uh, in fact he did because he invited me. But other politicians had thrown me out of the country. The Attorney General of the time uh, made an order to the University of Nairobi would not touch me. So they right. invited me, in fact, in a competition, they appointed me as a professor and started a law school. But um, these people stopped him and the university gave in stupidly, but you, and to my regret, uh, now I'm transgressing from them. But I just want to say that uh, it, it's a great pleasure that there is a new edition of uh, this book and one learns a lot from it. Uh, and uh, generally his scholarship is of a very high standard. His way yeah. of putting ideas are very uh, uh, interesting. And if you read my uh, uh, forward to it, uh, you will find uh, a great deal about my attitudes towards his help to us all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, listening to our keynote speaker today, listening to Dr. Mutunga today, and then now uh, listening to Professor, Professor Yash Balgai, who uh, is a Kenyan hero, and in many ways, the father of the constitution of Kenya. Uh, 2010, uh, I mean, complete EU, and I'm sure many of us today are uh, that uh, our commitment uh, is rekindled and we, we are really in this fight together. Thank you so much, Professor, again, for those uh, very uh, uh, kind words. I would like to now um, uh, let my co-moderator, Mukami, to take us into the next session. Thanks a lot, uh, Silas, and thank you to all uh, our speakers and our panelists uh, today. We are into the last part of uh, today's program, uh, and uh, I would now like uh, to take this opportunity uh, to invite uh, Professor Louis Franceschi, who is the Senior Director, Governance and Peace uh, at the Commonwealth, uh, to take us uh, through uh, the official launch uh, of this book, Constitution uh, Making from the Middle. So uh, Professor Franceschi uh, is joining us uh, from London. So Karibu Sana, uh, and uh, please take the floor. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you find yourself. My job here is very simple. Uh, I will first, before I say anything, uh, I will ask uh, one prominent Kenyan, Davinda Lamba, whom we, many of us, saw constantly in the news and battling for the constitutional changes to speak for two minutes. After that, I will give a very brief, very brief story of, 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 of how the book came to us and introduce the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, QC, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Uh, so perhaps I should ask Davinda Lamba uh, to come on board and give two minutes impressions of uh, the book of Willie, of his struggle for the constitution and for constitution changes. Davinda. Yes, uh, Mukami, is Davinda there or perhaps we give him a few minutes? Few minutes. Okay, so perfect. And then, perhaps yes, I, no, I, perhaps I can give the, the, a, a little bit of the, the history or the story of how the manuscript came from us while Davinda uh, joins the session. Um, 
several years ago, many years ago, um, uh, Willy Mutunga, the then Chief Justice, uh, told me, look, I published this book in the 90s and I would like to republish it or to make a new edition. Uh, and here is the book. But of course, there was no soft copy. Uh, we had just the manuscript, the hard copy. And it was a very exciting adventure because we not only had to write, uh, sorry, to read the book, but we had to retype it. And this was a fantastic effort undertaken by several students of the law school and Chacha Muita, who corrected the, the type copy, as well as uh, Martin Rekard, former teacher of Willy Mutunga in Strasbourg, who also corrected the style or did some, some, some little touches here and there because the book was already very well written. Now, it's very interesting uh, what Willy Mutunga put across in the book because the intersection between law and politics happens at the corner of human rights. There is a traffic light where we could say red is the rule of law, yellow is fairness, and green is freedom. So when the state powers jump the rule of law, the red light, they infringe and damage on freedoms, and they will sooner or later hit the oncoming citizens. Even if you are in government, in the government on the government bus, and you have and you are a power holder, well, sooner or later, you will have to get off the bus and you will be hit by the same culture you created of impunity. So you are setting yourself for failure for now and for the future. It's just a matter of time. So uh, sadly, this is something that is being lived now by some lawmakers across Africa who created that culture of impunity and they are being hit by that culture they themselves created because they are now off the bus. So jumping the rule of law, fairness, and making a mockery of the essence of the rule of law is testing the limits of freedom. So at this corner, I like saying that there is a zebra crossing, and which is called dignity. And when the rule of law and fairness go out of control, dignity is hit. And precisely the civil society has a beautiful role here because the civil society comes to act to make sure that this dignity, the zebra crossings, the, 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 the traffic lights, uh, the systems somehow are kept within their boundaries because in young or perhaps in mature democracies, uh, well, things easily go out of out of hand. You need uh, somehow that civil action, that mob, that heckling, uh, that keep things in place. And behind every civil society actor, there is a radical lawyer. A radical lawyer, not in the sense of violence, of anarchy, but unstoppable desire to bring justice back into the conversation. And this is what Professor Isa CFG was putting in a beautiful way. So the modern lawyer who reads the language of justice uh, in a whole contextual way is the person who will push uh, government systems to get back to justice. I, I tell you a little interesting story. I have a, a brilliant former student who is doing her PhD in SOAS, and she's doing it on the language of art and music in justice. For example, how arts, musical exhibitions, concerts, etc., speak to us of justice in the sense of uh, uh, in the sense of, of what is society telling the lawmakers, what is society telling 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 the people and telling the government through arts. So well, the time is coming when certainly NGOs, civil society have made an incredible um, push in, 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 in Africa, but the time is coming with, well, African funded NGOs will have to be present in the US, for example. 
trying to bring into the conversation the, the briefing space they have forgotten to have because we know that democracy is founded on a majority with a minority and the link with, between them is dialogue and that dialogue is built on dignity. Certainly if that dialogue is cut, dignity is destroyed, minority suffers, and then you have the tyranny of the majorities. Well, precisely, we need those radical lawyers, we need civil society, and we need to learn from the teaching of these great men and women, uh, somehow of the past, but who continue being present in us and through us and after us through their writings. And we thank William Mutunga very much for his contribution. Well, now yeah. I think perhaps Mukami, we can call in Davinda Lim, eh, eh, sorry, Davinda, to, to give his very few remarks, his two minutes reaction, and then I will call upon eh, the right honorable Patricia Scotland. Franceschi, uh, so we uh, think we shall be uh, done in about uh, 10 minutes uh, and Karibu to uh, Davinda uh, Lamba uh, to give us your reaction uh, to this book, Constitution Making from the Middle. Okay. I am with you now. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we, we can. can. Okay, well, thank you for inviting me to say a few words. Uh, and uh, let me begin by congratulating Willie Matunga and Strathmore University uh, for uh, the publication and the launch of the new edition of the book. This is my brief metaphorical view of the middle that came into being then. It was a middle to up the bottom and to gather to pressure the top to enact the constitution, to enact the law for a people-driven constitutional reform process. Further, to pressure the top to meet the immediate legal and political reform demands of the first multi-sectoral National Convention Assembly, NCA, of April 1997. The reforms needed for the immediate restoration of democracy. It was the self-interested opposition political party sector of the National Convention Assembly that betrayed the movement by their unilateral decision to join the inter-parties parliamentary group, IPPG initiated of initiative of KANU. This triggered the clamor of the NCA, NCC, no reforms, no elections campaign. Beware of the political class, beware of the betrayals of the political class from then and many to follow afterwards. Thank you for giving me a couple of minutes. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Davinda. Uh, sorry, Mukami, I cut you short. No, no problem. Uh, please OK. On. Excellent. Uh, you see, lawyers have the, the ability to take over anything they touch. <laughs> so I would like to ask now uh, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland QC and Secretary General of the Commonwealth and to give us a few remarks. And I understand that Willie and perhaps Yash, uh, Professor Yash will want to say something very short after to, to thank you for the, for the remarks. Um, okay, and the floor is yours, Secretary General. Well, firstly, can I say um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of our colleagues who have gathered today. It's a great privilege for me to be able to join you. Today, Kenyans mark a great milestone, the 10th anniversary of the Constitution of Kenya, 2010. The people of Kenya celebrate the Constitution because it is progressive, auto, 
uh, trustlessness, and more importantly, it's about justice. Any good law is about justice and for justice. The book we launched today as part of the 10th anniversary celebrations is about this struggle for justice. Dr. Willie Matunga, the author of the constitution making from the middle, who has also represented me as my special envoy in the Maldives, is one of the selfless people who sacrificed their lives to lead Kenyans in this struggle for a more just society. And I am delighted to be part of the celebrations to mark not only the 10th anniversary of the constitution, but also the new edition of Dr. Willie Matunga's book. Willie Matunga was not only Kenya's first chief justice in a new constitutional dispensation, his legacy teaches Kenya, Africa, and indeed the whole Commonwealth, two essential aspects of how to build a sustainable rule of law system. First, he institutionalized judicial independence by resisting pressure from any extrajudicial source or power and allowed judges ample latitude to decide according to the law guided by their good conscience and a sense of justice. Second, he understood democracy, freedom, and the importance of key structures that guaranteed their sustainability. For Dr. Matonga, identification within the nation is the thread that puts the tapestry together. Identification links everyone up. Identification keeps the nation together. That is why constitutions must be the genuine result of that togetherness that originates in the social dialogue. Identification is a hard uphill task in plural or multicultural societies. The greatest headache in a pluralistic setting is achieving that sense of identification that makes us feel we are together. Willie's book, is about a time in history when Kenyans sought a way to wave and the tapestry of law. They sought constitutional reforms, a time when they sought human rights for themselves, a democratic space, when they sought an end to corruption and when they sought to establish the rule of law. Willy Matunga is one of those great Kenyans who sacrificed their lives, careers, and even personal honor to lead Kenyans in this struggle for reforms. He was not alone, and several of those great Kenyans are here in this webinar. I would like to mention with special affection, Professor Yash Palgai, who has done so much for the rule of law right across the Commonwealth. Professor Louis Franceschi has told me so much about Prof Guy and his wife Jill, and also about many of the great Kenyans with whom I am honored to share the screen today. You all fought for, pushed, and steered the political momentum which resulted in a comprehensive constitution reform at the end of the millennium. Your efforts conceptualized Kenya's beautiful 2010 constitution. The struggle continues. The greatest challenge is implementation. As a black woman and a former attorney general of the United Kingdom, I always challenged all my colleagues to think of law as a tool for justice. Justice is the goal and anything short of this will be a betrayal of our professional promise. Only when justice becomes a reality, we will be able to breathe. I am delighted to be among the people gathered here today to mark not only the 10th anniversary of the Constitution of Kenya, but also this publication and you, Willie. I wish you all a fruitful reading. I am incredibly proud that people like Lizzie are with us because they are our future. And the fact that this book will inspire them 
is something that I really want to celebrate and give my own personal thank you to you, Willie, because we have to pass this baton on to the next generation so they really understand that law is just a tool to deliver justice. And without justice, law is meaningless. So I wish you all a fruitful reading. Go forth inspiring young minds, creating change and demanding accountability. Only this can secure Africa's future and a better world for our children's children. So thank you very much. May God bless Kenya and may God bless the Commonwealth. Excellent. Thank you very much, um, Secretary General. And well, I think after such a wonderful um, remarks, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I see Willie there smiling broadly. I will let him have the microphone uh, for a reaction or two. And then I will be inviting everybody, Professor Yash Palgai and everyone uh, in who have been a panelist to the book launch as it is. Excellent, Willie. Uh, thank you, Patricia. I, I wanted just to tell you that uh, the, the last point you made, the struggle for the implementation of the constitution uh, is, is now a burning question uh, in, this, uh, in this country because we realize that a progressive constitution cannot be implemented by uh, a leadership that subverts that constitution. So you are right, you know, the struggle continues and uh, thank you very much for your inspiration and encouragement. Excellent, very true. Uh, implementation is a challenge. And sometimes we want to change things we have not implemented on the accusation that they don't work, but we have not implemented them. Um, I should have said also that um, we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Gachenga, the, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Strathmore University and Dr. Peter Coenjera, uh, my very able, most able successor as dean of the law school, they will also jump in for the, for the launch. So perhaps Mukami, I should ask you now, put myself or put us in your hands. I don't know how a virtual launch is done, <laughs> but uh, I hope there is no virtual champion because we need it real. Okay, um, so thanks a lot, uh, Professor Franceschi. Um, thank you uh, to Davinda Lamba. Thank you to Baroness Scotland uh, for joining us. Um, and uh, thank you also to the professors uh, Yash and Jill Guy, and also Professor Shivji, uh, Dr. Gashenga, and uh, Dr. Quenchera. Uh, so, how the virtual launch is going to work. Um, is we can see you all on the screen. So really it's like you are here with us. And um, we will be unveiling uh, the book uh, right here uh, at the studio. Um, and you will see uh, the book also appear on, on your screen. Um, so Professor Franceschi, perhaps uh, you can lead us uh, along with uh, Dr. Gashenga and also Dr. Quanjera just to declare uh, the book launched. Excellent. So, uh, Dr. Gashenga, do you give us permission, Dr. Quenjera, to declare this book launched um, together yes. with <laughs> Baroness Scotland, Josh Palgai, and of course the author, Willie, a commissioner, everyone in the room. So, excellent work, Willie. And this began a number of years ago, it took long but I think it was worth the wait. Yeah, so yeah, from uh, Strathmore Law School, where we thank you very much for the good job. And yes, uh, on behalf of the law school, we are very happy to have the book launched. 
Uh, we would have been happier to have it launched um, physically, but mm -hmm. even this will do, and maybe we will call for a repeat uh, because we would love to have uh, Dr. Motunga here and this great team and Baroness uh, Patricia and Louise and Professor Yashpal Guy and everyone else on campus. Uh, after COVID, uh, I'm sure that you will visit us on campus. Uh, we will be happy to host you. Uh, thank you very much for everything. Yeah. And um, on, on behalf of the management board, congratulations, Dr. Mutunga. And thank you very much for contributing to, to the constitution through this book. Thank you to all the selfless people, some of whom are here, who helped this constitution come to birth. And, um, and yeah, may the will of the people of Kenya come to be. Thank you. Excellent, thanks a lot. And um, well, it has been a wonderful um, occasion. I joined a little, a little bit late, um, but certainly uh, I managed to get part of uh, Professor Isa's talk and from then on, it has been a great pleasure and well, thank you everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for making this happen. Um, at some point we were not sure it was going to happen. The book was taking very long and, and, and Dr. Willy Mutunga was also growing impatient. And well, finally it has come to pass and to pass means from our older generation to the younger ones. Lizzie, now the book is in your hands. Make the best out of it. Thanks a lot. Thank Mukami. you. Thank you. And here is uh, the book, Constitution Making from the Middle. Thank you. And finally, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to thank Elsie Steiner. Um, on behalf of Strathmore Law School, thank you very much to ICJ Kenya for partnering in us, uh, sorry, partnering with us um, in this feat. Um, and Elsie will be uh, giving us a vote of thanks. She is the head of programs uh, at ICJ. Karibu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mokami and colleagues. Wow, distinguished colleagues, our special guests, retired Chief Justice Mutunga retired Honorable Baroness Patricia Scotland, Professor Issa Shivji, former Dean Louis Franceschi, and our ICJ Kenya Chairman Kelvin Mogeni. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and our participants online, good afternoon. What a wonderful way and a wonderful note to end this celebration, which has marked the 10th anniversary of Kenya's constitution. During the last six weeks together, we have all delved into select themes and issues that were, dis, that were some of them discussed in the, in, the, in the publication that eventually led to this promulgation of Kenya's 10 years, uh, constitution 10 years ago. We have examined, we have examined various uh, themes, the nature of the constitutional underpinnings, provisions on public finance, land and environment, issues, gender and equality, devolution and national security. We noted that indeed, as most of the speakers have said today, whereas the gains have been made, the challenges remain. So the hope and the dreams of Kenya, we hope that we will eventually achieve it. Therefore, on behalf of the ICJ Kenya Council, the ICJ Secretariat, and the team from Strathmore Law School, we extend our sincere gratitude for joining us today. It has been a remarkable six weeks of introspection and reflection. Secondly, I would like to also extend our sincere gratitude again to Strathmore School. You have really been the partners with us. We have co-hosted this, a series of Katiba at 10 webinars. We also extend our appreciation. This would not have been possible without our development partners who worked with us and continue to cheer us on the journey towards 
you know, interrogating matters, constitutional human rights and the rule of law. We appreciate your support and we are really, really grateful for that. Thirdly, we would also like to extend our heartfelt, um, you know, gratitude to our partners in civil society. And this book couldn't have come at, a, at, at such a, a timely time. We particularly single out our Kenya Human Rights Commission, Inuka Trust, and Katiba Institute. We thank you for your continued partnership. And as Hen Henry Ford said, and I quote, coming together is beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. And I think today we can all say it's been such a wonderful success yeah. in bringing all of us together, including the distinguished panelists and participants who've joined us online. May we continue to collaborate and bring the dreams of Kenyans alive. Fourthly, to all the participants online and our stakeholders who followed us right from when we began the conversations in the first in the series. We, ask, we urge you to continue helping us to demand for better governance and respect for our constitution in Kenya. Finally, I sincerely thank the team from ICJ Kenya, the technical warriors in the studio, the people behind the scenes. Thank you, team. Thank you, Strathmore. <laughs> you have shown commitment, dedication, hard work, and we have kept the discourse alive. So as young people, I joined Dr. Mutunga, Baroness, Scotland in saying, this is the baton. The baton is for the young people. And we have been delighted that we've been able to reach numerous of Kenyans in our discussions. Finally, I say thank you very much. I say God bless you. And I wish you all a fantastic afternoon. Many, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elsie, for uh, you know, those kind, really kind words. Um, I'm really honored to uh, to uh, say that as we close, uh, please remember to watch this, uh, this uh, event and uh, other webinar series previously as uh, my uh, predecessors have mentioned uh, on YouTube, on the, on the ICJ Kenya YouTube channel. Please tweet and retweet uh, on uh, hashtag Tekeleza Katiba, Katiba at 10 and ICJ Kenya and Strathmore Law. Let me finish by a quote from our keynote speaker, Professor Shivji, that revolutions make constitutions and constitutions do not make revolutions. Ko wananchi na wanyeinchi sisi walala hoi tusiwachie walala hai. Asanteni. Thank you.